the tap or swipe or anything. And this is the pearl. This is the why I like uh, the way I grip my brushes. This is picking up my bead right here. I'm just gonna pick this bead up just to show you guys. When you place the bead, everything is gonna be off the bead, nothing stuck to it. Just a little bit of residue, which we clean our brush anyways, right? That's about a 50-50 ratio for me. I do about 60-40 ratio. That I don't have to tap, I don't have to bounce, I don't have to scoop. I can still pick up a nice bead like that. The reason why we like beads like this is when we're doing long nails, beads like this, when we place it down, it just hits onto the nail so perfectly. It's not too flat, not too round. And look, when it leaves the brush, there's barely any residue. And this is the residue you can just wipe right off. Look at that. Your brush is nice and clean. A lot of times we run into issues if you have a brush that's not a good Kalinsky brush, it's going to have residue stuck onto it. It's going to build up, build up, build up. You guys see that? You guys see that? Those beads? Uh, hopefully I'll go to Chicago for the beginning of the soon. This is actually from Wave Gel, this powder. You can buy it from wavegelshop.com. I'm, I'm gonna show you guys that bead one more time because they're just beautiful, beautiful bead, bead work. Just like that, consistency. Same bead every time. Notice there's no acrylic on the back side of my brush. You don't want that because when you place your bead, you wanna make sure there's not that much residue. And there you go. So let's do some application, okay? This is a medium setting, so um, it it may seem like my monomer, it, this is a dry bead, but it's not. Because once when I place it, when I place it down, you see that? doesn't move. Okay? I'm going to clean my brush. But if I want it to move, I just got to work with it. See that? When I use my brush, I really like using my brush to actually brush the powder. I don't like to have to tap it or lead it or let it drip down. Um, this is how I like to do application. I like to have control. I want to be able to move the powder when I want to move it because when the powder moves and I'm lightly brushing, I get a consistency. That means that I'm able to control the sidewalls. I'm able to make sure that the powder is going to be the same thickness throughout the nail. If you let the powder drip down the nail, what's going to happen? As it drips, it's going to start to dry, right? And of course, up here is going to be thinner than on here because all the dripping is drying and it's going to come all the way to the edge, right? So being able to work the powder is actually the more ideal application technique because look, I work my powder and it's nice, even, one consistent thickness, smooth throughout the nail, right? Brushing, the brush is used to brush. Oh, there you go. And you guys can see, it, I mean, I, it gave me time, right? The monomer gave me time. But especially with the powder, it doesn't work really well. And, you know, I can do as my second bead. This is doing two beads. I can do one bead for you guys. See? How many times are nail techs are like oh my gosh my powder is bleeding all over the place this monomer is medium it's not going to allow the, the powder to run all over the place on you but it still allows you to mold and work with it this is why you know i wanted the monomer this setting this type and it works with a lot of products guys not just wave gel i'm going to show you guys with some not polish some chisel uh, those are some popular brands right now on the market you know see nice and smooth Minimize what you have underneath. This is why monomer is important. And I'm gonna show you guys this right now. Monomer is important. So let's just do a one bead, huh? You should do Kansas St. Louis. Actually, um, we're doing we're going to Can I'm gonna be in Kansas City with Tino soon. I don't know how far that is from St. Louis. But we're gonna be going to Kansas City. Hey, Edgar, how are you? Effortless. Perfect. Oh my god, yeah. So I'm telling you guys, my monomer speaks for itself and it's like one of the best monomer out there in the market and it's definitely very affordable. Um, let's do a one bead just to show off a little bit, right? So place my bead like I always do. I can sit here and, you know, clean my brush. Give me time to clean my brush so it's not bleeding all over the place. Once my brush is clean, I get some monomer on the brush. Not too much monomer, okay? You're just getting some monomer to get the brush wet. And I'm able to work with my powder, mold it, do what I have to do with it, right? See, that's my monomer, guys. It's a medium setting. Look, see, I'm lightly brushing through with the powder and the powder's gonna move when I want it to move, right? If I want you to stop moving, I'm gonna stop working. So I'm gonna have to brush in, I'm gonna have to control the monomer, right? It doesn't even give it a chance to bleed on the side. How many times has you guys do an application and the monomer just goes all over the sides, all over the cuticle area? Yes, this will not give you the ability to have the cuticle area and this is the monomer, guys, not the powder. Because I, I, I'll i show you because I'm going to use other products. I'm going to use other powder other than this. See? 
one thickness. How smooth it is, you don't have to even drill this. Just kind of slightly buff it or, you know, hand file or shape it. Look, barely any product underneath because it didn't overflow. This is why, you know, high quality monomer is different. Okay, this is wave gel. If you guys like this color, it's 88. Let's switch to not polish. And I'm using pigmented colors to show you guys that there's no marbling. You guys ever have the issue where pigment colors like this are marble? Not with my monomer. You will never get marbling, okay? This is not polished. Different brand, different company, completely different, right? More or less the same result, right? You have some kind of clear here, but that's okay, because remember, we gotta brush in. Look, the moment I'm brushing the powder, all that goes away. So like I told you, this is a different, completely different product, different company, they mix it differently, but more or less the same, because the monomer is the biggest factor whenever you're doing nails when it comes to the acrylic, okay? Um, acrylic does have a different, some acrylics are mixed differently, yes, but if the monomer is definitely the one that overtakes and makes that factor, the, the, the more more important factor. So there you go, there you have it, same, okay? And that was with not polish. Let's just, let's do a chisel, here. Uh, Chisel powder, a nice brown for the fall, okay? Chisel, very popular brand also, okay? Why do you think my monomer gets sold out literally every time? Every time I post it, it gets sold out. I will have the bigger size eventually, guys, 32 ounce for a lot of you guys, but I'm gonna get rid of some of this pigment. So this is Chisel, very popular brand. A lot of you guys probably know it. If you don't, you should definitely get some. Same consistency, B, place it down. Doesn't bleed, right? But look, I'm still able to work with it. It's not dry, that's why it's called medium. It just gives you time, you know, for those that like to work the brush. If you're the type of applicator that wants to put it on and have it running and then just guide it down the nail, this monomer is not for you, okay? Um, I know you guys seen a lot of tutorials of people do that where they just like, you know, watch the, the, the monomer drip down the nail, the, the acrylic drip down the nail. You have no control over that. You know, that means that the acrylic, the product controls you. I'm more of a nail tech that likes to have, be in control of the product, okay? I want to use my brush to do what it's supposed to do. I want to be able to brush it. Because guys, listen, look at me when I tell you this. When you use your, your acrylic brush and you brush through the nail, what happens here is the acrylic brush is going to Take on the curvature. It's gonna smooth everything out. If you're going like this, what's happening? You're putting trauma into the nail, okay? If the powder is very wet, what is gonna push it this way, that way, this way, that way. This brush motion allows you to caress the acrylic. A good acrylic brush will go very nice and smooth. And you get this nice, smooth, you know, transition through your nail that you don't have to do too much drilling, filing, all that other excess stuff that's gonna take you longer. This is, where, this is where your three hour sets come from, everybody. That's where your three hour sets come from. You're taking three hours because it's, you're doing all this excess stuff, right? Make your job easier. What number chisel? This chisel number is... Solid 208. You need a gallon? <laughs> I know you do. I, guys, we're getting there. Uh, this chisel, chisel 2.8. I actually really like this color. It's a very fall color. I'm going to do application again on this. I really like this color. My brush, the 16, will be able to get me a big bead. Look at that. The same consistent bead every time with this brush. Okay. Put it down. I put a lot more monomer in that time. Fold it in. Tap the cuticle area, look at that. Tap the cuticle area, still have time for this. Brush the acrylic. Come on, guys. You can't get any better than that, right? This is, this is, a, this is, this is a, an acrylic wet dream right here we're looking at. Smooth, being able to not worry about powder 
going over the sides, you know, changing your shape, too much work, doing all this later than that. Brushing through, it took me about 10 seconds to do this nail, all right? Look at that. Every time, one thickness, one smooth thickness. And that's the monomer. I wish I had another type of monomer here to show you guys, but if I had another type of monomer, I would show you guys the complete difference. Um, you can purchase on my net, my link pinned below, naildadshop.com. I told you guys, if you guys can try this, um, regardless of how you like it, you know, like if you don't like it, you can always return it, just pay for shipping, because I know someone else will definitely use it. And let, let's try and using a, a more natural color, because we've been using high pigment color. Okay, how are the, how are it with like a more lighter color, okay? Like nudes or, or, or uh, light colors. Works almost the same, right? What well, should be. This is on a more lighter color. I got a little bit of brown pigment in here, but that's fine. See, the powder doesn't really run, but when I wanted to move it, I'm gonna move it and it's gonna move. Like I said, if you're the type that likes to watch the powder run down like this, no. If you're the type that likes to use that brush and do what the brush is made to do, as in work, work. And my room temperature right now, guys, is about 72, 73. A little bit warm, actually. So I recommend 71 to 73. I think I'm at 74 right now in my room temperature. A little bit stuffy in here, but it still works really well with the medium, you know, setting. Um, anytime you go over 74, or 73, you definitely see a change in your setting speed and in, in your monomer. Um, you're keeping that monomer or that product in that room for uh, to match that temperature. Um, anything lower than 70 would definitely make this more runnier, but my application stays the same. So does my consistency. And these are some really, really pretty colors I got in here, y'all. Um, let's do, let's do a white or something, like a, like a light nude or something. Yellow? No. Where's my white? Like a milky white. Well, milky white won't show up on this, sorry. I have a white swatch stick, so I need to do like new colors and stuff like that. But all in all, I'd like to, I actually want to show you guys again with uh, some of this wave gel pot, pot, powders. You can definitely get it at wavegelshop.com and you can use my promo code now dad for it. They have really nice pigment color. Like this hot pink is really nice. Um, it comes out to be like this. Uh, more of like a, with a top coat, it'll be really booming. Well, what the heck? Let's do an ombre, huh? With these two colors, pink and this, this mint color. And it's very important that ombre, remember that first coat has to be very important. This has to be very smooth because it's, it, it's reflecting. Uh, like, you know, if, when you, you blend the other color in, if this is not smooth, what's gonna happen is gonna have inconsistency in your ombre. Look at that. When I wanted to move it, I'll move it. And you'll know when the powder is ready too, guys. Let that dry a little bit first before I put my second bead, the hot pink, that's the ombre. And I said I should have done the... Should have done the nude over the pink, because the pink's not very pigmented. It's gonna be a little bit harder to ombre, but let's see. Ooh, wow, I still got it, y'all. Ombre is my favorite technique for nothing. Still got it, look at that. Nice and effortless. Just have a nice ombre. Pretty. It's a nice hot pink to mint ombre. Uh, uh, everybody's like, what color is that? What color is that? I should do like a QVC selling powder right now. Um, this color is 71. This color is 88 by Wave Gel. 
Ooh, I kind of want to see some powder mar. Okay, let's see some powder marbling with this. Okay, let's do some fall powder marbling since we're already here. Let's do some powder marbling. What the hey, right? Show you guys a little bit some of the fall. Let me do some light nudes. Yeah, some light nudes with this dark nude. Yeah, maybe a little glitter somewhere. Maybe this glitter in there somewhere. Okay, fine. This glitter for my glitter set. Best glitter thing you're gonna use. All right, let's do a quick mar powder marbling. Why not? I mean, just because it's a medium sentence, man, it won't be able to run and give you that nice marbling effect, okay? Usually I put clear, but this time I'm gonna put a little bit of that nude and I'm gonna place my glitter. Just nice and thin. Get that glitter up in there. Kind of right over the uh, the marble here, just so we don't see any harsh lines where it ended there. Kind of blend it out. See that? And you put this in the middle or at the tip of the nail, and it goes fine. Let me see if I can grab a clear here to encapsulate. Do, 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 do. Where am I clear at? Come on now. Huh? I think my staff has been in my station. Yes, they have. They've been taking my clears out of here. So, of course, anytime we work with powder marbling we got to encapsulate we just encapsulate this design and the reason why we added the powder here is to keep the glitter to stay there and you build a structure with the um, the clear and when you put taco on it's gonna look amazing you add gel on top of that And you see the monitor works really well with the clear too. You know how clear sometimes you work with a, a slow setting monomer? What happens? It runs and drips all over the place, right? And well, with the medium setting monomer, you get less of that. top coat that design and get yourself eight to ten dollars for two fingers add a little bit of gold right here vein work or something like that um some rock hell what the hell i'll do the whole thing okay let me clean this up i'm gonna do the whole thing for you guys okay this i'm gonna finish off this design and turn it into a 15 dollars design for you guys how about that and we'll end the live there i just wanted to show off the monomer a little bit because I, I get a lot of questions i want to actually show people so now i can tell them to just go to this video and, and watch it because i boop, come to this video and watch it i'm gonna file buff this nail and i'm gonna do the final design on this it's one of my favorite um designs actually um powder marbling and stuff like that clean my brush of course you gotta make sure you feather through if you feel the brush has anything inside see that you need to get that out. Remember, I did a lot of acrylics that. 
A lot of people don't get that out. And what happens is you don't see it because you only see it from the outside and then it seals in and then your, your brush gets really bad. So you gotta really, really clean it over and over. And feather your finger through like this and you'll feel it. If there's anything stuck in there, you can see it also. Very important you guys do this because outside may look clean, but inside is not clean. So that's where you guys are running the issues with the brush getting sealed in there. Remember, there's that, if you have acrylic in there, that's just so, that's okay. That acrylic is still wet. You know, it's, it can be removable. But if you wait over that night or an hour, 30 minutes, that acrylic is no longer wet. So you can't remove it as easy as I just did there, okay? Acrylic brush. Now it's formed to the shape I want it, where it's crimped, and I restore it standing up. Let me clean all this up. I'm going to finish up this design for you guys. It's like a quick fall design for those of you guys. Um, this glitter is big, small, and foil glitter. This is my website. It's a 12 set, 12 different colors for those who are doing different color combinations. Let me put all this away. This nail I'm going to keep. These nails I'm going to just gonna chuck away. I'm going to throw out my monomer. I really don't need this monomer anymore. It's all pigmented. this now I'm gonna dry a little bit more I can feel like it's still a little bit wet I didn't see your site to go up oh, yep it's right down there huh how much do you usually pay when you buy clear acrylic in bulk it depends on what, where you buying in the nail supply store I buy maybe a gallon maybe like 89 and 100 dollars 120 max depending on the market value sometimes you guys gotta know acrylic prices goes up sometimes um not really but monomer and acetone are the prices that goes up a lot because monomer and acetone is used for a lot of other stuff than just nails so just like recently the monomer price went up um like pretty much everywhere so i have to change my price based on what, how much the distributor is charging me too so yeah um if you're a nail tech you know that prices go up acrylic it's really rare for the acrylic prices to go up because acrylic prices, there's not a lot of competition with that. As in the, the raw materials, you know, there's a lot of it. Unlike um, monomer and acetone, and it's, that, that stuff's being used for a lot of things, not just nails, so. I'm gonna smooth this out real quick before I finish up this design. And adding just some little stuff to this, guys, to actually make the design a lot more, you know, pleasing and add some more money to it. <laughs> So I want to turn this marble into like almost like a rock design. And this is easily done. Make sure nice and smooth surface. Dust that off. Give it a good buff. Ooh. Nice and smooth. Okay, dust off my stuff too. Now I'm gonna get my gel machine out. My gel machine is dead because I haven't used it for a week. Gel polish. A little bit of acetone. So do you, do you, just to know on the acrylic bay, because I want to know what's a good price. Variety, so do you make your monomer? Your own ingredient? No, 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 no. No one ever makes their own monomer, okay, guys? Don't be confused. Making monomer is not something that you can make. You need a facility that, that, that's, that requires a lot of, you know, you know, a lot of things. No one makes it. No one in the industry makes their own monomer. They get it as raw material, okay? Raw material means that this material is raw, that the company produces it, 
you can add you can request for specific changes in the, in the raw material but you never can make your own monomer please don't be confused um, anybody that tells you that they make their own monomer is bullshitting you okay um the ability you do you have to have a certain license to choose to produce those uh those uh those products too okay um i get my monomer from a, a source they have it distributed and i pretty much test it and i tell them what i want with it and they, and they do it for me okay and that's just honest truth i don't make it myself i don't have the knowledge i don't have the licensing i don't any of that I know what I want, that's what I asked for, and they produce it, and that's all I'm, I'm happy with. I'm using my, a detailer brush, I'm just gonna add some definition line in there. Yeah, that makes me, yep. You'll get people that will try it, they'll, they'll, they'll try it, and they'll say, yeah, I make it myself, or no. You know, you gotta really, <laughs> you gotta really just be honest with a lot of things that you do. And uh, I'm, most of our products are just unique because we ask them to create it in a certain way. And if you get the right company and they're able to do it for you, then yes, it's different from other people, right? Does it mean that I have the ability to make it? No, that's not my area of expertise. I'm a nail tech, I don't make monomer. I know what I like. I know what I like, and, that, and that's how I request it. There's no company in the United States that makes monomer. Use my oval brush, just lightly blend in, give myself a marble effect. Give myself a wrap, like crack effect. I can probably take a little bit of a gold, something rosy. Where's my liner brush? Finish this off with some gold. Separating the design a little bit. Cure this. Of course, my trusty no white top coat. Probably one of the best top coat I've ever used. That's going hard. Just 
top for everything. Bring the design together. You have yourself a nice marble rack look. Separation of the gold. You yourself a ten dollar design. Add a few things on there and make it pop a little bit. I will be doing product reviews soon for my YouTube for a lot of you guys that need product review. Um, I'll provide